There's a big push from some folks in the United States to just give away a lot of government money to cancel student debt. Today I'm going to talk about what I believe are the real issues between why student loans are so toxic in the United States and what the country should do about it. As someone who has lived outside of the United States for a long time, I look at this as a uniquely U.S. challenge. If you live in Europe, you may pay very high taxes, but you're getting health care, you're getting education. Even if you're not European, you can often go for a very, very low price to schools around Europe. And if so, if you're in the United States and you're about to go to, to school, you should consider, is there another country where I can go and substantially reduce my cost and perhaps avoid taking on student loan debt? But when I went to school for that one year, uh, and I went to university and lived near the campus, I saw the university that I went to in Arizona spending money hand over fist, building fancy buildings. It just really didn't seem like there was any kind of cost containment at all. And that shows. You see what people make working for the university. Not that people should work for free. Uh, not that people should work for cheap. But you saw a lot of bloat. Not only the number of folks working there. In some cases, it seemed like what they were paid. Again, not that people should work for cheap. Uh, but you also saw just runaway construction. You said, is that really needed? Do we need this to be so fancy? Do we need that beautiful sheath of glass? Do we need this? Do we need that? And the reality is, schools in the United States have jacked up the prices dramatically every year because they can. Because there is this market imbalance where the money's coming for free, so why not spend it? I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist. For the last decade, we have helped high and ultra high net worth individuals legally reduce their taxes overseas to stop funding some of this runaway spending, uh, increase your freedom with dual citizenship, and grow your opportunities by looking at markets around the world. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And so when we first saw this first uh, student debt cancellation push in the U.S., I looked around social media, uh, Zero Hedge said if colleges raise tuition $10,000 or are they waiting a few days in response to the government saying, hey, $10,000 of debt will be canceled. And that's the perfect point because look at, the, look at how much the inflation rate is. Forget how high inflation is in your country to begin with. Look at how much higher it, it is and has been on the price of university. Governments, are, the universities know that governments will back the loans and so people will just pay whatever it takes because you have to have the value of an education. Maybe if we didn't allow 17 and 18 year olds to make six figure investment decisions with money they don't have, maybe if we didn't uh, convince people that everyone has to go to university, maybe if we didn't insult people who want to go into trades or who want to be entrepreneurs, maybe if we actually taught financial literacy, something that we previously told you, something like one out of six high schoolers in the United States actually learn even in a single class, maybe people would make better decisions. And just maybe if you could pay taxes to the high rates that you do, with rates as high as many of our clients come to us and they're paying half, uh, close to half of their income with the high federal taxes, they've got a state tax, they're paying payroll taxes on part of their income, they're paying close to half and then their kids go to school and they get nothing in return. Maybe some community college benefits, but for the most part, they're still paying a fortune. Other people on social media were saying, how do you look at a truck driver and say, give me $10,000? Uh, Peter Schiff called it just a plan to buy votes. Uh, and also it was said, almost everything the government does encourages more debt, less responsibility, more wealth concentration, less product productivity and prosperity. And so when you look around, what are the complaints of folks in the United States? They feel like, hey, there is more wealth concentration. I'm less prosperous. It's harder to get ahead. And they don't blame the fact that it's maybe harder to get ahead because unlike places in other parts of the world where you can go to school for very cheap, you are paying in many cases six figures and multi six figures to get a university education in the U.S. And people are being sold this bill of goods that going to a certain school is the way to go. People are going out of state and they're paying more than they have to. This to me, this whole student debt cancellation, I'm not going to say that people aren't having a tough time in some cases, but when I look at the moral hazard of some people who, for example, worked during school uh, and they paid it down. I worked during school. Um, I, didn't, I didn't stay in school that long, but I worked in school. My parents wouldn't have, wouldn't have allowed me to do it any other way. Uh, if you do that now, you will see that you will be attacked. Uh, I've seen many, many, many comments of, no, you didn't. It's impossible to work. You can't do that. It's like, you go to school for what, 12, 15 hours a week? You study. If you, if you just don't go to play frisbee golf or whatever they're doing, you can have a full-time job. There are people, some of them have been our clients, who start businesses in university. We've had numerous clients, 23, 24, 25-year-olds, not even from the U.S., from like Egypt, 
from Morocco, from Brazil, from uh, you know, Asia. And they've built, in some cases, six and seven figure incomes in their early 20s by just starting something. Now, maybe that person doesn't need a university education. Maybe they want to go and they want to get the connections. Maybe they just want to go and enjoy that part of life. But this idea that you can't pay for your own school, or at least reduce the cost, reduce the amount of student loans, shows what a victim mentality the United States has become. It's what Peter Schiff at one point said, I think made a lot of sense. He said the United States was a place where people would move because they wanted to be left alone. They wanted the government to leave them alone. They wanted to make their own way. It was the home of the free, and now it's become the land of the freeloader. Everyone has their hand out. And if you look at, for example, you go on Twitter, you want a great follow, uh, look at some of these politicians or former politicians like Nina Turner. You'll just see every tweet is what people should get for free. Everything should be free. Now, again, maybe if, if you're paying such high taxes, the government probably should give you some stuff for free. I'm sure they can cut out some, some waste and some fraud and some abuse, and maybe they can, you can you not have a military that's bigger than the next you know, seven militaries combined. But the mentality, what I've told you for years, is the culture in the United States. The culture of any country is what matters, and the culture is gimme, 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 gimme. It's the land of the free letter. It's no longer the home of the free. You have this moral hazard. And so the question has been asked multiple times, to politicians, has been asked publicly on social media and in public forums, hey, I had a debt and I worked hard after school and I paid it off. Do I get this credit? Absolutely not. And then what happens is people get told, well, how dare you? And there becomes this collectivist thought of, well, you're just a bad person because, oh, you paid off your debt and you worked hard, but there are other people who are struggling. You don't want them to have a good life too. And this, to me, is the ultimate sign of a toxic relationship. If you had a friend or a girlfriend or a husband who, who acted that way to you and who threw stuff in your face like that, you would say, this is a toxic relationship. i got to get out of here. And yet you continue to live in a country where the people around you will literally say, you worked hard, you sacrificed, you wanted the Dave Ramsey beans and rice diet to pay off your student loans. Someone else didn't. They get out of school, woohoo, I'm making a bunch of money, go and get an $800 car payment. And now they get their student loan paid off. Or you just went into the trades, you don't have a debt, you're out you know, unclogging uh, people's toilets, you're working hard, and someone who studied some stupid major, now your tax dollars are paying. And the politicians say, oh, your tax dollars aren't paying. What, what else would pay for this? What else would pay? Right? I mean, even if it's like, oh, we're going to force the banks to pay it off. I mean, I don't know how they do that. But then, you know, the banks will make it up somehow. And then the, the stockholder, I mean, just, it'll, it's, it's cascading effect. Of, of course someone has to pay. Who are these politicians that think, like, nobody pays when things are paid for? But literally, if you're asking, hey, I worked hard, and I took, and I sacrificed, and I paid it off, why did I get the deal? And people shame you. It is just so, so toxic. This is what happens when you have a culture where any slight, any amount of hard work is, I'm taking a break for my mental health. I'm all for mental health, probably more than anybody. I believe in people having sane, happy lives. Big believer in mental health. I'm not a big believer in this modern thing of, you know, like I don't wanna work six hours a day from home because like my mental health. This is your culture and what's happening. If you're not like that, people like me, people like you who just, we wanna work. We want, we, we're willing to sacrifice. We don't want to be in debt. I don't, I don't want to be in debt. You're going to be punished by people. And you're going to be told that you're literally a bad person. That's the direction it's going. Now ask yourself how much of that existed 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if you were around 50 years ago, 50 years ago. Ask my grandmother, who's 93 years old. Ask her how much of that existed back when she went to school. Now school was a heck of a lot cheaper because before it became this industry where a bunch of people went into education and you know, took a whole bunch of money and everything had to be you know, over the top. So it was a different situation. But do you think anybody back then expected you to pay? And do you think they would have had the, the gall to shame you for saying you sacrificed, but you should pay for me? By the way, you know it's all a total uh, smokescreen. When people say you, shouldn't, you should be concerned about the greater good, you should allow me to have my, my self-interest even though you don't get to be self-interested. Look at what we do in the offshore world. We help people legally move overseas. If you're an American, that means you've got to jump through a lot of hoops because we believe in doing it by the book. 
But if you're going to move overseas, you can take your business overseas, you can dramatically reduce your taxes in a legal way as an American. And the same people who shame you for their one-sided self-interest will also shame you for the fact that you ever did anything to benefit yourself. So it really just is a system where they just want free stuff from you. Now, nobody wants to fix the big problem, which is the tuition, which is going through the roof. And so, again, if you can go to school somewhere in Europe, find the schools that are incredibly cheap, Talk about the college experience. If you're coming from the United States, wouldn't you rather go to Europe and study in some university? The United States pays more than France. Hardly a bastion of free market capitalism for everything from uh, homeless housing uh, to train tracks, which they don't do very well at, uh, to school. France. France is beating the U.S. in terms of efficiency and spending money on everything from transportation to school to you know, social housing. France. Now imagine if you were to move your business to a place where they don't want to tax you at the wazoo as France does. Imagine if you went to a place like Dubai where they actually run things efficiently. Now you could, if you want to spend money, move to Dubai, take your kids with you, or move to Abu Dhabi, take your kids with you, send them to, some, send them to NYU in Abu Dhabi, for example. Send them to all the fancy schools that are popping up there because schools in the U.S. would like to uh, continue the grift to people who can't get U.S. visas because it's very hard. I, I know a, a, a lady right now who, super advanced in her scientific field, can't get a visa to go to the U.S. And, and, and go to university. She's the kind of person who might go and study in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. And they're bringing these U.S. and British and Australian universities there in the same quality. So if you want those schools, maybe you consider going there. And you can probably pay for it by simply moving yourself uh, to that tax-free country. Uh, but if you're not going to do that, then at least consider you know, going to school somewhere where it's much cheaper uh, and realize that you are getting a terrible deal in the U.S. You're just paying a fortune and you're getting nothing in return. What that feeds back into is you're paying a lot for nothing in return. You're sitting in an increasingly whiny culture where you've got to do business. They're going to demand you pay more money, not just to pay off their student loans, but just more money in taxes because they feel entitled and they feel like they are victims because of you. You're successful because you did stuff they wouldn't do. Hey, you're still going to come ahead if you paid off your student loans and you sacrificed and you did all the right things. You're still going to be ahead of them. And that makes them so angry. You think they're not going to come around for the, the next helping and the next and the next? My opinion is you want to have your second home, have a second citizenship, have some infrastructure overseas. Now, do it all legally. Get a bank account in some other country. File the forms that you need to file. You know, we've got a network of tax experts and CPAs. If you work with us, we'll create... Um, you know, a whole plan and connect you with all the folks you need on a multi-jurisdictional level. So especially if you're an American, you've got a lot of things you've got to play by the book. If you want to offshore your business, offshore your money to give yourself a bit of asset protection, lower your taxes. If you want to move somewhere else and have a second citizenship so you've got a backup plan to escape to when these people start coming for more of your money, you can do that, but you want a holistic approach. And that's what we do here at Nomad Capitalist. So we're helping people fight back against an increasingly victim culture to make sure they can preserve their wealth, the wealth you worked hard for, the wealth you sacrificed for. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com and we'd be happy to help you.